This is Ethan, and I'm here with Dave, and together we are Dave and Ethan's 2,000-inch Weird Al podcast, episode 122-inch. On this week's episode, Weird Al superfans Mike Minnick and Adrian Vasquez help us determine the definitive top five songs on Weird Al's cheesy compilation, The Food Album. It's Dave and Ethan's 2,000-inch Weird Al podcast. It's a podcast about Weird Al. It's Dave and Ethan's 2,000-inch Weird Al podcast. Seriously, the whole podcast is about Weird Al. It's Dave and Ethan's 2,000-inch Weird Al podcast. You don't have to listen, but we're glad you are. Dave and Ethan's 2,000-inch Weird Al podcast. Oh, hey, everyone. Hey, Dave. Welcome to this week's episode. It's finally episode 122 inch. We've all been waiting for this episode. Yeah, we really hope you enjoyed our interview with actor Sam Levine, which aired over the last two episodes. And in case you have not listened to it yet, in the interview, Sam asks a simple favor from all of you. And, well, let's just say it involves a secret word. Ooh, I love secrets. All right, secret word. Let me guess. Mmm, is it chicken eggs? No, that's two words, and I'm not going to tell you what the secret word is. You have to listen to the interview in its entirety to find out. But we did see a lot of activity around that word on Twitter, and even Sam was getting into it. So it's not too late to participate in the fun if you have not already. Oh, okay, all right. I'll take, I, I can take a hint. I can take a hint. Uh, but is the secret word fireworks? No, Ethan, that's not the secret word. Just listen to the interview. All right, okay, fine. I will listen to the interview right after this week in Weird Al Related News. This past week at episode 3 centimeter of our Black and White and Weird All Over bonus episode series dropped for the cheapskate, uh, for the general public. This is, of course, our book series where we sit down with author John Bermuda Schwartz and we go picture by picture through his book, Black and White and Weird All Over, the Lost Photographs of Weird Al Yankovic, 1983 through 1986. Well, we're extra excited because our intern, Frank, has told us that this Saturday, September 4th, yet another episode is scheduled to drop for the, for the, for the general public. Oh, very cool. All right, so last episode, we covered the first half of Chapter 2, I Love Rocky Road Video Shoot. Well, in Episode 4 Centimeter, we cover the second half. And don't forget, Patreon supporters always get bonus episodes early, so they've already heard that one. You can check out our Patreon by heading over to patreon.com slash 2000inch. Now, if you remember from last week, the bodacious UH Jeff gave us a heads up that Weird Al definitely is showing up in the new season of Showtime's Work in Progress. Well, the time has come because according to Jeff and his screenshots that he posted online, Al shows up on episode four of Work in Progress, which is available now on Showtime. And speaking of the bodacious UH Jeff, he shared a great article from Entertainment Weekly where they named Weird Al as one of their picks for the next round of Jeopardy! hosts. We absolutely agree with that. And speaking of Weird Al mentions, our past guest and Patreon supporter, Allison Parsons, let us know that Rhett and Link of Good Mythical Morning fame mentioned Weird Al on their Ear Biscuits podcast. Now, they were going through their top 10 albums of all time, and Link placed even worse as his number 10 choice, and Rhett had Weird Al Yankovic in 3D as an honorable mention. Uh, not quite high enough, guys, but you're getting close. And there was almost a Weird Al appearance on the new Pete the Cat Back to School special. Yes, so while we see, and they mention Wow Wow Weasel, the character that Weird Al portrayed on the show, he unfortunately does not have any lines. But he is playing the accordion, so who knows if Weird Al actually went in and recorded five seconds of himself playing something random on the accordion, but probably not. Also, last week we mentioned that DementedPunk.com is selling the three-inch vinyl singles of Weird Al's Beat on the Brat, the Ramones cover, on their website for only $19.99. 
Now, there's still a very limited quantity available, so head over to DementedPunk.com if you still need one, and Dave and I absolutely recommend picking one up if you collect Weird Al or The Ramones or Dr. Demento or Vinyl or Three Inch Singles. or Just go get one. And also on the subject of Beat on the Brat Three Inch Vinyl Singles, Ethan and I got a real treat in the mail this week. Yes, so back on Record Store Day in July when we were trying to track down, you know, these copies for our own collections, we discovered that Neil Camera, he's the Garbage Pail Kids artist behind that incredible cover art drawing, we found out he was doing a limited signing at the Sisters of Sound Record Store in Manhattan, Kansas, the day of the release. And as much as we demanded and threatened our intern Frank to go and pick up copies for our collection, he refused to comply. So, after punishing Frank thusly, we reached out to Sister of Sound Records. Now, unfortunately, they did sell out of singles on Record Store Day, but they told Neil all about us and our podcast, and he agreed to come back and sign copies just for us, and he also signed some really cool, pretty stinking majestic Garbage Pail Kids enamel pins, and we just got them in the mail. How cool. So from all of us here at Dave and Ethan's 2000-inch Weird Al podcast, a big thank you to Sisters of Sound Records and to Neil Camera for going above and beyond. Definitely follow at Sister of Sound Records on Instagram. There's a little news about the documentary about the band Sparks that features Weird Al, the Sparks Brothers. It will be released on Blu-ray later this month on September 28th. And as of yesterday, it's available digitally. So visit WatchTheSparksBrothers.com for links. And there's some exciting news from one of our past guests. On Monday, episode 103-inch guest Chris Waffle of the Chris Waffle Explosion released his latest digital album. The digital album is called Nerds in Oregon, and you can pick it up on his Bandcamp. Yep, just head on over to chriswaffle.bandcamp.com. And check out his other awesome music, too. Hey, speaking of music, Ethan, how was your Ethan Christian and the Eligible Spatulers gig last week? Oh, well, thanks for asking, Dave. It was actually a ton of fun. You know, people showed up. We remembered all the words and the guitar stuff. And people laughed at all the right parts. Well, it's always important for people to show up. It's always important for you to remember the words. And it's always important for people to laugh. So will you remind us of the next opportunity to see Ethan Christian and the Eligible Spatulers? We will be performing at the Linda WAMC's Performing Arts Center on Wednesday, September 22nd in Albany, New York. And we're opening for a couple local bands that most likely have not been on the Dr. Demento show. Wow, that sounds absolutely awesome and pretty stinking majestic. Hey, Ethan, you seem to know about this sort of thing. Are chicken eggs vegan? Uh, chicken eggs. Well, yes, chicken eggs are vegan. Have you ever seen a chicken egg eating meat? Duh. Oh, and by the way, this week's episode is brought to you in part by Vegan Burrito Restaurant, Burrito Burrito in Troy, New York, home of the two-pound double wrapped in a quesadilla burrito burrito, and Wizard Burger in Albany, New York. Come on down to Burrito Burrito and Burrito Burrito, your Burrito Burrito, or hop on over to Wizard Burger for mouth-watering, loaded, dare I say, beefy vegan burgers. From Troy to Albany to Uranus, Burrito Burrito and Wizard Burger feed the hungry with out-of-this-world, plant-based, real food, always vegan style. Visit burritosquared.com or wizardburger.com and order ahead. Ethan, I'm very excited to get to the top five discussion. But, you know, there is another question that's been on my mind recently. And I don't want to be distracted while we're ranking Weird Al songs. So I'm hoping you can answer this one, too. And I can go on into our discussion with a clear head. Oh, well, sure, Dave. I guess I can try. What's on your mind? All right. So I've been wondering... Which came first, the chicken or the egg? Ah, the age-old question. Well, Dave, I'm afraid that's one of those questions that just can't be answered. You know, just like this other one that can't be answered. Which came first, David Grant's TikTok account at tiktok.com slash at Seb underscore Shep or David Grant's website at wolfandwool.com? Oh, that's easy. Wolfandwool.com came first. Old Dave, I know WolfandWool.com has excellent content on how to find out 
all the information you would ever need about David's books and his comedy music persona, MC Chalkskin, and how to order great merchandise. But TikTok.com slash at Seb underscore Shep allows him to share his passion and creative expression through video, music, and dance. Uh, David launched his TikTok account about a month ago, and we've been talking about WolfandWool.com for months already now. WolfandWool.com came first. Well, Dave, I guess we'll never know. All we can do is just encourage people to follow at SEB underscore SHEP on TikTok and visit WolfandWool.com. Okay, and this week it's time for another one of our patented and often very controversial top five lists. Dave, we have such a treat for our audience today because we are doing yet another of our insanely famous definitive top five lists. And this time, for the first time ever, we're going to be doing it with not only two other people, but for a Weird Al compilation album. Yeah, this is going to be a lot of fun. It's going to be a bit different than some of our other top five lists because not only do we have, like you said, two guests, our good friends, Adrian Vasquez and Mike Minnick. Hi, guys. How are you doing? Hey, guys. Yeah, thanks for having us. How are you? Great. How are you? So I'm really excited that we're going to be doing the top five for the food album. And obviously, our listeners and your listeners know why we're doing this album, because you guys announced that you're going to be launching a podcast called Adrian and Mike's Living in Weird Al's Fridge Podcast. So what better way for us to extend the olive branch but to to do a crossover episode? That is a good way to do it. (laughs) (laughs) So I've known Adrian and Mike for many, many years, more than I can count on on all my fingers and toes put together. But uh, just so that people know, um, how did you guys, uh, let's start with Mike. Mike, how did you become a Weird Al fan? And he tells about the first time that you ever met Weird Al. Well, my first exposure to Weird Al was either in music class in elementary school. The teacher would play funny music. Uh, Eat It was one of them. Victor Borga was another one that she played often. Or I saw the complete Al at my friend's house. Um, the tiger scene really sticks out to me. <laughs> <laughs> so it was it was one of those two things like that stuck in my head for years even when I wasn't a fan of Weird Al there was a small gap there <laughs> uh, but the first first time I met Al was 1999 at the Grand Theater where it's also the first time I saw Dave and was starstruck by Dave and Al <laughs> aren't we all well, as it should be of course yes it should be <laughs> that's the guy whose website I've been stalking <laughs> I had the same reaction when I met Dave <laughs> <laughs> All right, Adrian, how about you? Okay, so, um, man, my well, so my first exposure to Weird Al uh, actually plays into a choice in the list that I put together for today. So I'm going to play a little bit of that close to the best right now. But I, w- I, w- I was a wee lad, and uh, all I'll say for now is the, vi- the video for this song came on uh, MTV. And I was, I was, I was in another room, and my, and my, my mom, she called me into the room and said, Hey, there's this crazy guy on TV making fun of a certain artist who I'll name later. And, uh, you, you, you'd love this. You got to see this. And you know, my life was ruined forever after that. So, uh, and, and so that was, that was my earliest experience, which led to, uh, me like saving every penny I could to get my first weird Al album. And, uh, you know, it was, uh, just uh, craziness from there. As far as my first time meeting <laughs> me, meeting Al, that would have been in 1997. Um, I actually, you know, for all for all the times I've I've seen Al in the uh, uh, you know tri-state New York New Jersey uh, area here, I actually met Al for the first time in Michigan. Oh, wow! <laughs> um, at a sh- yeah yeah yeah. Well, you know, I I had just uh, started dating my now wife and. And I uh, was visiting her in Michigan, where she was originally from. And uh, she had a friend who worked for a radio station who had gotten her passes. And yeah, yeah, we got we we uh, we got back, and I got to meet both uh, Al and uh, you know John Bermuda Schwartz for the first time that that uh, that evening. And uh, you know, it was, was just the first of many meetings. He was as like gracious and awesome and you know, Al, as he always has been. 
and uh, <laughs> you know, it was, it was just it, it was. I, I, I a lot of people have said it like the, the whole that phrase like "never meet your heroes" does not apply to Al. So yeah, <laughs> always meet your yes. hero if it's Al. Exactly. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, so I, I think if it, if it wasn't obvious already, you guys are two Weird Al super fans. You guys have, have been obsessed with Al, maybe to the level that Dave and I have, or maybe even beyond us, for, for many, many years. So you are perfectly suited not only to host your own podcast, Adrian and Mike's Living in Weird Al's Fridge podcast, but to join us for this top five ranking. Uh, so I'll just go over the rules briefly. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to take turns sharing our picks. Uh, all four of us have our own top five list. None of us have shared that yet, so it's all going to be a surprise to us on the air. Uh, once we go through all of our top five picks, the four of us are going to have to definitively decide the actual definitive top five songs on Weird Al's The Food Album. So we will... Uh, have to horse trade, we'll have to, to discuss, we'll have to argue, there will be tears and sadness, but we will by the end of it <laughs> no matter how many days or weeks we are locked in these rooms, we will come up with a definitive top five and that will be the, no one can argue with it, you know, if we leave off a song, nobody, you know people just have to accept that we are the definitive deciders, so. Well they better, yeah Dave, why don't you give us a little bit of background on the food album yeah, I just want to say before I do that, that I've been grooming both Mike and Adrian to be on this episode for many years. I've been vetting them out, and I can assure you that they are very qualified to rank out the songs on the Food Album. In fact, for the past two years, I've asked that all they listen to is the Food Album. Nothing true. else. True. Don't watch any TV. Don't listen to any <laughs> other albums. Don't even, you know, don't even think of anything other than the tracks on the food album. So they are very qualified to handle this. And I, I know that they've been diligently, you know, sticking to uh, my request. <laughs> it, it, it was our life's calling. This is what we were born for. So, you know, our moment came and we, we grasped it. <laughs> I, I actually had to go back out and buy the album because I loaned it out twice. And yeah, sorry about that. I got Matt. it back twice. <laughs> <laughs> and Adrian, you have two copies that have Mike's name written on them, don't you? Um, it's a different Mike. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so what can you tell us about the food album? Yeah, so this is going to be a little bit different. Uh, usually this is the part where I drone on for hours at a time about, you know, tons and tons of facts about the album and tons and tons of facts about the song but because this is a compilation album uh we either would have already discussed these songs or we will discuss these songs so i'm just gonna basically run down the songs really quickly um i'm gonna assume if you're listening to this podcast you are as familiar with these songs as adrian mike ethan and myself uh, but if you do need more details on them, uh, you can go back and listen to our top five definitive songs for that particular album, either that we've already covered or will cover on a future episode. So the Food Album was originally released on June 22nd, 1993. And this album is fun because it actually has 10 songs on it that are all parodies. There's no original Weird Al songs. There's no polkas on it. So this basically covers all the food songs from the first album up through Off the Deep End album, with one real notable exception, and that is Girls Just Want to Have Lunch. One of my favorite food songs is not actually included on this album. Um, it was intentionally left off because uh, Al's official reasoning was that he had reached some kind of royalty ceiling, and including that song would have made the album unprofitable for him. In reality, I just don't think he likes that song a lot. <laughs> There's some, you know, we covered that when we went over this album, uh, Dare to be Stupid. It was a little, it's a little, some controversy behind that song. The album was certified gold by the Recording Industry Association of America on January 25th, 2006. That means 500,000 copies have been sold in the U.S. So it is a popular album. In fact, it's Al's only cheesy compilation album to be certified by the RIAA. Wow. Yeah. We need to buy more TV albums. <laughs> I think a lot of that has to do with all the copies that Mike had to purchase. Because um, he keeps <laughs> lending them out to people that do not return out. them. I have my own gold record on the wall. Now, just like the controversy with Girls Just Want to Have Lunch, this album 
does have some controversy with it as well. It was released against Al's better wishes and judgment. He was not a fan of his uh, record label putting out this album because he felt it was an unnecessary compilation. He saw value in the greatest hits compilations, but this one he just felt was a money grab and he did not particularly enjoy having it released, though he was contractually obligated to release it and the uh, record label did push it. So that's why it's out there. I think uh, the fact that it sold 500,000 copies or probably was a confirmation from the record company that, you know, yeah, this out, there is a market out here for this album. Um, And then uh, just a couple things about the artwork. The artwork is a really cool picture of an alien eating Weird Al. And that was, of course, drawn by Doug Lawrence, who we've interviewed on episode 7 Inch. And Doug is probably most famous for being the voice of Plankton on SpongeBob SquarePants. But he also did draw this artwork on the cover. And the art direction of the album was done by Doug Haverty. Hmm. Why do I know that name? (laughs) You might want to put a pin in that name because he might become important on a future episode. Intriguing. Did Al come up with the term cheesy compilation because this was the food album? <laughs> or was that just a coincidence? <laughs> it was probably a happy coincidence. I just, I just think he felt it was cheesy. <laughs> Not being a fan of compilations himself. <laughs> this is why we have people like Mike and Adrian as specialists in the food album, because right. they come up with these hard-hitting questions. You're not going to get these hard-hitting questions anywhere else. I'm sorry. (laughs) Right, right. (laughs) All right, so real quick, if you don't have the album in front of you, just I want to go down the the track list real quick. Uh, The track one is Fat, which is a parody of Bad by Michael Jackson, originally from the Even Worse album. The second track is Lasagna, which is a parody of the Mexican folk song La Bamba, which was popularized by Richie Valens in 1958 and later released by Los Lobos and the cover version that Al does on the even worse album is the Los Lobos version. Track three is Addicted to Spuds, a parody of Addicted to Love by Robert Palmer and that is off the Polka Party album. Track four is I Love Rocky Road. Originally recorded by the Arrows in 1975, the track I Love Rock and Roll is the parody target but Al's cover is of the track later re-recorded by Joan Jett and the video for this one is actually directed by Dror Soroff who we interviewed back on episode 73 inch this is off of Al's self-titled first album Weird Al Yankovic track five is Spam a parody of Stand by R.E.M. and that is off UHF the original motion picture soundtrack and other stuff (laughs) track six is Eat It The second Michael Jackson parody to appear on this album, Uh, it was Michael Jackson's Beat It, and the track is off of Weird Al Yankovic in 3D. Track seven is The White Stuff. It is a parody of New Kids on the Blocks, You've Got It, The Right Stuff, that originally appeared on the Off the Deep End album. Track eight is My Bologna, a parody of My Sharona by The Knack, also from Weird Al's self-titled Weird Al Yankovic album. Track nine Taco Grande, a parody of Rico Suave by Gerardo off of the Off the Deep End album. And track 10, as credited on the album, is The Rye or the Kaiser, the theme from Rocky 13, which is a parody of Eye of the Tiger by Survivor, which originally was called just Theme from Rocky 13 on Weird Eye Yankovic in 3D. It's one of those songs that now has two names, and because it does appear in official release, it now can be referred to by either one. And that is the track listing for the U.S. release. There actually was a Japanese release of this album, um, commonly called the Hood Album. Because it says (laughs) H-O-O-D on the release. (laughs) Good reasoning. (laughs) Right. And there is a a, a bonus track on the Japanese album, uh, track number 11, Eat It Without Vocals. And that was actually... Um, also known as Eat It Karaoke Version, which originally was on another Japanese album called The Official Music of Weird Al Yankovic, which was released back in 1984. So it truly is not a new track, so it does belong on a compilation album, but it is only available with the Japanese version. Uh, We're not going to be ranking that song because we're going to be sticking solely to the U.S. release. Wouldn't it be funny, though, if we did rank it and one of us liked 
eat it without vocals more than eat it. <laughs> <laughs> I just don't like the words. Eat it. I just like the music that. <laughs> it is an interesting choice because eat it without vocals is essentially beat it without vocals. Right. <laughs> You can make an argument that it isn't. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, at least that's the idea behind it. Obviously, Weird Al wrote the music for Eat It as well, but is heavily based off of Beat It. <laughs> I will say Beat It without vocals does not have uh, hand you know, farting in it. So there's a difference. <laughs> <laughs> Good call. <laughs> well, <laughs> with that, Adrian, how about you start us off and you give us your number five pick? My number five pick. Okay. All right. So my number five pick actually is Eat It, actually. Um, for me, ah. yeah. So it's a nice segue there. Um, I, for me, it's actually hard not to give this one a place in the top five. It's kind of the one that started it all as far as like Al's mega popularity. You know, I, I don't know. For me, it's... I don't. It, <sighs> It's funny, we were just talking about the music from Beat It. That song originally, is, to me, is such a great, amazingly catchy song that, it, you know, so the music on Eat It, it's just hard not to love the song. And then for Al to just make it about incredibly picky, incredibly picky eaters, uh, you know, just elevates it to another level, obviously. Um, and, for me, and, for, and for me, it's hard to hear that song and not think of the video for it, which was like a masterpiece as far as how it kind of shot for shot parody, the original, which was kind of like the first time Al did that kind of video that set the framework for like all the subsequent videos that he would go on to create like that. So uh, I, I had, I had, I had to, I had to make sure to get eaten in there and that's where it fell on my list. Very nice. Mike, did you have eat it at all on your list anywhere? I do. I have it slightly higher, but uh, it's definitely on there. It's Al's first song where he's actually more singing and not doing that you know, screechy voice that, that the first album and pre-album kind of had. Uh, it's definitely uh, one of my favorites. Ranked it a little bit higher. You're allowed to do that. <laughs> I'm not going to take it personally. <laughs> yeah, if I could if I could jump in there too. I think that you ranked Eat It a little bit low on your list as well, Adrian. I'm I I I know I know that a lot of people will feel that way, but whatever, that's where it landed. <laughs> And I'll probably regret it after listening back to this. So I did rank. I did have it on my list. It was higher than number five for sure. Um, it was uh, the first Weird Al song that I actually remember hearing. Um, so it does have a special place in my heart. It's very sentimental. Um, a couple things I really like about it is I like that Rick Derringer actually did the guitar solo. Uh, that was. Eddie Van Halen did the original guitar solo on the Beat It song. So Rick Derringer took over the guitar solo piece in there. And that's a really cool guitar solo. Really cool to have Rick Derringer do a guitar solo on there. And unlike Fat, which we'll talk about later, which was not included on the Strings Attached Tour, Eat It was also not included. But with the Eat It song, I actually found myself missing it not being as part of the Strings Attached Tour set list. So... I, I definitely felt that it was a, a important song. And I also feel that um, this song is so important in Weird Al's career. It actually launched Weird Al into a household right. name. So I think that gives this song a lot, you know, a lot of weight to it. And you also, when you're ranking songs that are all parodies, like on this album, I think you have to kind of also give some thought to the original song that was being parodied and just how big of a hit that was. And of course, Michael Jackson's Beat It was a huge hit. And it also translated into being a huge hit for Weird Al. Like I said, not only did it make him a household name, but it also peaked at number 12 on the Billboard Hot 100. It won him a Grammy for Best Comedy Recording in 1984. And it was certified gold by RIAA in 1989. So th this song does have a lot of accolades to it as well. So what you're saying is I'm wrong. <laughs> well, that that might be what they're saying. Everyone, everyone's entitled, everyone's entitled well, to their well, opinion. Listen, but yes. listen, even as I'm sitting here looking at my ranking, I, 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 I kind of wish I could redo it now. <laughs> well, you know, Adrian, uh, Dave and Mike kind of gave you some crap. But I, I stayed quiet because Eat It is one of my honorable mentions. It did not make my list. Okay, so there. 
<laughs> I at least included it in my five. You're very wrong. <laughs> <laughs> and Ethan, why does that only make it to your honorable mentions? You know, when I put together this list, my process was if for the next year I could only hear five of these ten songs, which five would I choose? And Edith didn't make that list. It's a song that I've heard quite a bit. Um, and I, I feel like some of these other songs um, are ones that I enjoy hearing more. So, you know, historic reasons aside, um, I just have more fun with a couple of these other songs. So it, it did not make my list. And I think, I think I had somewhat of a similar thought process. And I will also say, like Dave mentioned for Edith, that being his first song and, and you know, having that sense mentality for him causing it to also be higher both my number one and two songs on this list are we're, we're always going to be the number one and two songs on this list for exactly that reason so maybe that makes me you know a, a sentimental idiot but i i embrace my sentimental idiocy <laughs> <laughs> well and it, this is all opinion so we you know we have to respect each other's opinions on here of course well, it'll be interesting to see how this plays out then. <laughs> uh, with already, already we're starting off on, on a different foot. Already, some alliances are being created, but <laughs> it'll be fun making that final ranking. <laughs> yeah, I have a feeling this will be one of our most difficult final five rankings that we've done on this podcast so far, and maybe ever. But let, let's uh, continue on, uh, Mike. What is your number five song? The White Stuff. Ah, The White nice. Stuff. I have an unabashed love of boy bands. <laughs> uh, so this one, you know, it really, really fits right in my, my musical wheelhouse. So uh, it's, it's probably ranked higher in, in my normal list, but I put it at number five because it's going to be the easiest to lose. <laughs> <laughs> Strategy, I like it. <laughs> Mike, let me say that I also put The White Stuff as my number five. Ah. I love this song. I think it's really funny. I think it's really catchy. And I love that song. And like I said, if I could only hear five of these songs for the next year, I would want White Stuff in there. So that's why White Stuff made it on my list. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah, I also, I also think it inspired some products because you can buy an Oreo uh. cream <laughs> coffee cream. <laughs> So you can mix it in with your coffee. And, you know, then, of course, there's double stuff, triple stuff, double, triple. There's all sorts of, you know, people who are obsessed with the cream. So I, I think Al, you know, really, uh, he's ahead of his time on that. <laughs> all right. But I got to ask, Mike, have you ever tried rubbing it on a roast? <laughs> no, but we're having roast for dinner. So <laughs> try that and report back to us. I'm going to have to marinate my next brisket and just, just slather it in the white stuff, throw it in my smoker and just see what happens. <laughs> <laughs> well, Mike, I thought we were uh, we were on the same page with the Edith thing, but I, I, you know what? White stuff actually didn't make my list at all. It's a good song. I, I, nothing against it. It's just I felt there were stronger songs on the album, stronger parodies. Like you said, I, I felt it was a good idea. It came off the Off the Deep End album for Weird Al to actually include a boy band on the album just for how big boy bands were. And New Kids on the Block is as boy bandish as you can get. So that was <laughs> definitely uh, included. And I do like the, uh, from a collector's standpoint, this is one of the two um, hardest to find singles. They're technically deleted singles. They were never, ever sent out um uh, the other one being i can't watch this also off of off the deep end uh, they were originally intended to be singles and then at the last minute the record company scrapped it took all the cds threw them in a dumpster and fortunately john bermuda swartz and weird Yankovic found them before they got crushed into tiny little pieces <laughs> and saved a few of them making them probably uh oh some of the hardest uh, Weird Al collectibles to find. Just, they're so scarce. I was pretty much with Dave on that. I, it, and again, it, it kind of goes back to like all 10 songs on the Food Album are, are like, you know, good to great songs. I, I love it, but it, it just, it did not place in my top five. Yeah, I think that's a, a great thing to say because it really is all hits and all really great songs. Right. So it is it is very difficult to pick. And, and for anyone that didn't make my list, doesn't mean I don't like the song. It's just, exactly. It's yeah. hard. It is. It's, it's a hard <laughs> album to go through. Yeah. 
All right, Dave, let us know your number five pick. Sure, I'd, I'd love to let you know my number five pick. And this is the only track off of Polka Party, Addicted to Spuds. Ah. Huh. Yeah. I feel like it's one of Al's underappreciated parodies, being on the Polka Party album, which is one of Al's least best-selling albums. <laughs> it's an interesting way to say worst-selling. <laughs> and then also this not being a single off of the album it, i feel like it's, it is a very underappreciated parody i feel like it maybe has never gotten to as many ears as it should have uh, gotten to here i just love the fact that it is uh filled with potato puns i don't really know of too many other songs that are just filled with potato puns and i do also have uh, some sentimental reasons for putting this song on my list. The first being um, that as a child, and this was before caller ID and things like that, my cousin and I would occasionally make some prank phone calls. Well, we decided it would be fun to leave the entire lyrics to addicted to spuds on someone's answering <laughs> machine so we memorized the entire song <laughs> wait prank called people until we got someone's answering machine and then left the entire lyrics to addicted to spuds on that person's answering machine i can only imagine what they thought when they got home and finally listened to their message um and then the second <laughs> The second personal reason is that I did get to see this song perform live at my first ever Weird Al concert back on July 11th, 1992. And uh, it was great seeing it live. Weird Al was dressed up as Robert Palmer with the white shirt and the tie. And there were two gigantic <laughs> potato heads up on the stage dancing and singing along with him. So it's a great concert memory for me as well. And that's why it all those things combined together is what put it at number five on my list. You can't deny it's got appeal. <laughs> yes. I, I love the song. Uh, it did make my list, but it's higher up. So we'll get to, uh, to that later. Yeah, it was on my list, but through revisions, it got kicked off. I originally had it at number four, but hmm. kicked it off after a few more listenings through the album. I do enjoy seeing the video of the <laughs> giant yes. missing potato heads. <laughs> That that always cracks me up, so that, that I think that's that bumped it a little higher in my initial list because of that thought. But definitely an honorable mention for me. And Adrian, did this uh, addicted to spuds make it anywhere on your list? Um, it made it just outside my honorable mentions, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> so your dishonorable mentions, <laughs> <laughs> lightly honorable mentions. Because they're all good. <laughs> no, I love this song. It just it did not crack my top five. <laughs> all right, Mike, what is your number four? Number four, Taco Grande. Ah, nice. That could be because we had Mexican food the other night. <laughs> but it's kind of a list song, but it's more of a menu song. But there's a lot of Spanish in it, and I know that's just the food, but it's kind of making up for the lack of Italian in lasagna <laughs> you know how you, so this song is mostly in spanish which kind of goes with his original thoughts for lasagna but i was actually reading the lyrics and i've never done that for the song for what 30 years i've been singing this song by saying and a peach margarita like a peach margarita i didn't know it was a pitcher of margaritas <laughs> according to oh. how the <laughs> I, I did hear it the same way for a long time, admittedly. So you're not alone on that. <laughs> Thank God. <laughs> see, see, that's interesting that it, you said it's a pitcher of margaritas, because I always thought it was a pinch of margaritas up until this very moment. So maybe I should should be reading the, uh, the Just want a small margarita. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and how, did uh, Taco Grande make anyone else's uh, number four? Uh, it did not make my number four. It did not even make my number three, two, or one, five, or honorable mentions. Uh, <laughs> hey, me too. <laughs> it, it, it is in my honorable mentions, I will say. Okay. <laughs> okay, I was actually thinking it might, I was actually, you know, trying to figure out what you guys might rank, and I thought Adrian might put this as number yeah, one just because. I, uh, I know, okay. Yes, I, I, I am. I, I expected it too. My entire, I, I realize my entire online presence is uh, based around taco imagery. Uh, you know, um, <laughs> and, and this this basically, if this were a six song ranking, it would have been number six. 
but it's not. So it's an honorable mention. So you're you're a lone wolf on Taco Grande, Mike. If I could just add a couple a couple things to Taco Grande. This is the song that has the Cheech Marin cameo in it, and uh, an interesting story about that is that. Cheech does not know Spanish very well. He only knows basic Spanish. So when Weird Al tapped him to do the part, he did not know how to actually say the word. So we had to have somebody write it out for him phonetically. And so that is Cheech phonetically saying all the words uh, in his little <laughs> cameo at the end of Taco Grande there. Yeah, I did not know that. About, yeah, I did not know that about Cheech until this came about. I was, I, that was surprising to me, but okay. <laughs> Yeah, I I agree. I don't think I knew that until it came out either. Um, And again, putting some weight to the original song uh, by Gerardo, the original song was only a one-hit wonder, so I think you kind of need to factor that into this as well. It it was a one-hit wonder. It was a big one-hit wonder, but it was a one-hit wonder, so that does... uh, factor into things as well yeah rico suave de- definitely did not have staying power like the other songs <laughs> right <laughs> right all right adrian what's your number four pick okay so my number four pick is i love rocky road um it's always been one of my favorite parodies from his debut album um i don't know for all the songs where you hear the original and can't like help but overlay al's lyrics over it I like especially get that urge for this one. Yeah. <laughs> so that, that's kind of, you know, that, that's kind of, I, I can't, you know, my apologies to the to Joan Jett, but I just can't not sing along Al's version over her. Um, <laughs> yeah. I, that's just, that's where it landed. And, you know, I like ice cream, so why not? <laughs> well, Adrian, <laughs> I have to agree with you. It also made my list at number four. All right. It's a, a fantastic song. It's one of the first songs I ever memorized as a kid. I believe the first one, it was either, I think this was the first song I ever memorized. The second one was The Saga Begins. And I agree with you. I cannot listen to I Love Rock and Roll. I can't even say it. I cannot listen to I Love Rock and Roll <laughs> exactly. without hearing, exactly my point. Thinking, yes mimicking Rocky Road. As far as I'm concerned, this is the definitive version of that song. Uh, I mean, I'll say that about every single Weird Al parody, but it is such a great (laughs) song. It's so catchy. It's right off the first album. I love the song. Uh, It had to make a a spot on my list, and uh, four was as high as I could put it. (laughs) Agreed. Well, I know, Ethan, that you've tried Rocky Road ice cream as part of our ice cream social that was sponsored by Dave and Ethan's 2000 Inch Weird Al podcast a few months back. Uh, I, this is the first time I ever tried Rocky Road ice cream. But let me ask uh, Mike and Adrian if you guys have ever tried Rocky Road ice cream. I have never had it. I have, like, twice. It, 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 it was well into adulthood, uh, <laughs> and I like it. <laughs> Mike, you got to try it. You got to... You know, sp- spread your wings and, and be a true Weird Al fan. You can only be a true Weird Al fan once you've had a Twinkie Wiener sandwich and Rocky Road ice cream together. <laughs> like a la mode, like on top? <laughs> In a blender. <laughs> Sounds perfect. I'm not a true no. fan yet. No. Because <laughs> I haven't had either. <laughs> well, I mean, if you... It- if you're going to go that route, then you've got to, you know, throw in potatoes and lasagna, spam, <laughs> Oreos, bologna, uh, tacos. So what you're suggesting is a food album smoothie, basically? Yeah, I, I think so. <laughs> because I'm on board. That's a great challenge. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Listen, before the next concert, instead of going to a restaurant, we just eat the food album beforehand. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> I'm down. (laughs) So this song did not make my list at all. Um, Though, you know, it it was tough because I did learn a lot about it from our interview with Dror Soroff. So that that actually made it tough not to include on my list. But ultimately, I did not include it on my list. What did you put as number four, Dave? Well, thank you for asking, Ethan. So my number four song is Lasagna. Uh, okay. Lasagna. I've talked a little bit about why I like the song Lasagna uh, when we were doing the even worse top five list. But just to kind of reiterate a few things, uh, it, it reminds me of Christmas dinner with my Italian family. You know, at a, 
I'm particularly fond of the character Cousin Luigi because every time I hear that, it reminds me of my great uncle Pete, who I'm sure I, I don't know why, but I just I picture my uncle Pete, you know, in the in the role of Cousin Luigi uh, in the in the song. You've cast him as Cousin Luigi. I've cast him. I've cast right, right. Unfortunately, he's no longer alive. But if he was, I feel like that you know. If there ever was a full-length video for this song, I know that a partial video exists on the Weird Al Show DVD. But if there ever was a full video for this song, I felt Uncle Pete would have roll would have uh, captured the role of Cousin Luigi perfectly. <laughs> Love it. Yeah, it made my list too a little bit higher. Mm -hmm. um, like Dave, I have good memories of lasagna. Aunt Joanne used to make it every New Year's Day, so you know we had our little holiday lasagna feast yeah i i also have it higher as well um i love the accordion on the song and lasagna was always one of my favorite foods as a kid so it kind of spoke <laughs> to me also the reason i was a big garfield fan as a kid so i love the song i love lasagna uh it did not make my list hmm. another thing i just want to add about lasagna is i love you know Mike touched a little bit on it that there really is not much italian in the song but kind of that broken english broken italian um lyrics and and feel to that song i really enjoyed <laughs> as well sure i could relate to that <laughs> all right i think uh have we touched everybody's number four let's uh move on to number three and let's start with you ethan what was your number three song so my number three song it's already been said uh, but it is Addicted to Spuds. Ah. Um, I, I already shared my love of this song, but um, I I had to put it in my top three because it's just a song that I can never hit skip when it comes up on Shuffle. I just, I love the song way too much and it's just too much fun. So Addicted to Spuds, my number three. All right, let's uh, go to Adrian. Adrian, what is your number three song? So my, I'm, I'm interested if anyone else even has my number three song on their list. Um, my number three song is the Rye or the Kaiser hmm. theme from Rocky 13, which are, whichever oh, okay. way you want to roll with it. Yes. Um, I, I, I just always, I don't know. I, I've always loved the story that this song wants to tell. <laughs> um, I love the idea of, a, I love the idea of a washed up Rocky running a deli, but taking the time to beat on some liverwurst. Um, <laughs> I, <laughs> I weirdly just love driving to this song. I, I can't explain it. But but um, if I'm putting together like a Weird Al playlist for driving in my car, the Rye or the Kaiser is definitely on there. <laughs> can't explain it. It did not make my list, but I love that in the later Rocky movies, once they turned into Creed or whatever, uh, they actually do show Rocky owning a... A restaurant, so I like to think that he's in the back beating up liverwurst. <laughs> <laughs> another, uh, yes, just another, another example of Al being ahead of his time. Yes. honestly. <laughs> he definitely should have had a writing credit for Rocky Balboa because that was the first okay, first one okay. where he had his, his right. own restaurant. This one is actually my number ten. <laughs> oh, nice. yeah. I mean, being from Philly, it probably should be a little higher, but I don't know. Just didn't really do it for me. You guys are hurting me a lot because uh, I will say that the Ryder <laughs> the Kaiser is on my list and it is definitely higher than number three. Wow. Okay, well, I'm, I'm, I'm glad I'm at least not alone in having it on my list. I wasn't sure. So. <laughs> I mean, a lot of the reasons that Adrian you gave are the exact reasons why I love this song as much as I do. Uh, you know, okay. it's, it is, you know, it's one of those songs that you just can't help but hear and put you in a good mood. You know, it, it, yes. it just like it was intended for in the Rocky three soundtrack as the theme song for that. It was intended to pump you up and to get you kind of in a fighting, you know, mood in a good, you know, positive exactly. mood. So, so I, I felt that, you know, I, every time I hear this song, I, 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 it makes me happy. I think it's a really good parody. I think it does a great job of kind of telling a sequel to the whole Rocky franchise, you know, kind of what happened, you know, 13 years after the, or 13 episodes after the original Rocky movie came out, just where is Rocky Balboa now? And exactly. 
we we did kind of see that come up in some of uh you know the rocky balboa movie or wherever where he does end up owning a restaurant maybe at some point he does end up you know <laughs> selling the restaurant and just opening up a deli it's really cool that he's still practicing in the back still got his fighter <laughs> mentality he's beating up lunch meat in the back you know it's really it's really cool and the original song that's based off of eye of the tiger um actually was a huge hit for Survivor. It reached number one on the Billboard Hot 100. So it was a great song for Al to uh, parody. And um, I've seen the you know Eye of the Tiger on several lists as one of the greatest rock and roll songs of all time. So you know the 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 weight that the original song gets, as well as just how perfectly Weird Al parodied that and created a sequel to the Eye of the Tiger song. You know, and tied it all in with Rocky. <laughs> I felt this this was a top song off of the album. Now, I do want to point out that while Al has this set in the 13th film, Rocky Balboa was the sixth film, and that's where he first gets the restaurant. And so far, as of this recording, there's only been eight films in the series released, but the ninth one, Creed Three, will be out in 2022. So just four more releases after that, and we can... Four more to go. We can see. Yes. <laughs> yeah, it- <laughs> It would be interesting to see that if they ever do get to a 13th Rocky movie, if there's some kind of uh, shout out or mention of, you know, something right. <laughs> that shows that they're aware of this song in somewhere in the uh, actual film itself. At least have someone in the bread aisle, like holding up a rye roll and a holy of a Kaiser roll. <laughs> <and> like, <laughs> 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 It'd be amazing. <laughs> yeah, you know, I mean, if they just had if they just had Rocky trying to make a sandwich, and, and you know, he's like, "Do you want the rye or the Kaiser?" Like, really, really it can be just a quick second of the movie, but it, sh- it should be that. right. <laughs> just, just something that that's a nod to the Weird Al fans right. into Weird Al. Just something that that acknowledges that they are aware that this song exists. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. I, I I hate to give spoilers for upcoming movies, but uh, I don't think Rocky's going to be involved in Uh-oh. thirteen. Shh. <laughs> if anybody saw Creed Uh-oh. 2, you'll know why. Well, well hey, there's like could be a flash, time travel right? and ghosts. So, yeah. you know, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's uh, let's hear from you, Dave. What is your number three? All right, we're going to have to stop right there. But hold on to your Twinkies and Ding Dongs because we will be back next week for the exciting conclusion with our definitive top five songs from the Food Album featuring Mike Minnick and Adrian Vasquez. Do you agree with us so far? We would love to see your top five songs off of the Food Album. Be sure to drop them over to us on social media and let us know by calling the official hotline at 347-SPATULA and leaving your picks. And always remember, if you don't agree with us, you're wrong! This week's episode is brought to you in part by Discover Darwin, promoting tourism in Darwin, Minnesota. Not only is historic Darwin, Minnesota a beautiful, it's also time to celebrate. This weekend in Darwin's neighboring town of Dassel, Minnesota, it's the 62nd annual Red Rooster Days. And where there's roosters, there's chickens. And where there's chickens, there's chicken's eggs. Well, it's no twine ball day. We'd like to think the residents of Darwin and Dassel can put aside their years of differences for one day and just get along. Well, at least for this year, since it's the 62nd annual, and that's a Weird Al-related number, of course. Red Rooster Days starts this Friday, September 3rd, and runs through Monday, September 6th. The events include a farmer's market, an 18-mile bike ride... A seven-mile bike ride, a quilt show, and the largest chicken barbecue in the state. And, of course, fireworks! Ooh, I love fireworks! Personally, Ethan, all these events sound great, but I can't help but think Red Rooster Days is missing something. Oh, really? Missing something? I mean, it seems to me like it had everything you could ever ask for. And more. What's missing? How can you have an event called Red Rooster Days and not have it centered all around former professional wrestler Terry Taylor? I honestly am not sure if you're just making up these wrestler names at this point. 
Uh, I mean, uh, so visit Darwin, Minnesota on your next expedition. Discover Darwin, more than just the twine ball. And after you visit Darwin, Minnesota, be sure to visit discoverdarwin.biz. Today's episode is brought to you in part by Joe and Stashu from Waiting for Lunch Radio. Waiting for Lunch Radio is a freeform radio show inspired by mixtapes and zines, playing a wide range of crazy music and hot, fresh, demented ear food. Waiting for Lunch Radio is not available wherever you get your podcasts because it's on Mixcloud. But don't you worry, you can find it at waitingforlunch.com. So come on down to Waiting for Lunch Radio and Waiting for Lunch, your Waiting for Lunch Radio, or hop on over to WaitingForLunch.com for a hot and loaded, wizardly vegan freeform radio zine. From Detroit to Jersey City to Europa, Waiting for Lunch Radio feeds your hungry ears with out-of-this-world real music, always freeform style. Leave a weird message at 313-883-9275. And always order ahead at WaitingForLunch.com. Each week we are able to bring you our podcast absolutely free thanks to our sponsors Burrito Burrito, Discover Darwin, Jackson Scoggins, David Grant at WolfandWool.com, Joe and Stashu from Waiting for Lunch Radio, and Angel Valenzuela and David Cash. And also thanks to our amazing close personal friend, Patreon supporters, Jake, Javier, UH Jeff, Zeb, Allison, Blair, Frank from the Bank, Kenneth, and Jared. And thanks to Jason and everyone else in our pretty stinking majestic Patreon family. If you enjoy our family-friendly weekly Weird Out podcast, please consider joining us at patreon.com slash 2000inch or by picking up some pretty stinking majestic official Dave and Ethan's 2000inch Weird Al podcast merchandise such as our new line of Discover Darwin products over at shop.2000inch.com. Grab your copies of Black and White and Weird All Over and check out our special book series where author John Bermuda Schwartz walks us through his book page by page and picture by picture. Bonus episode 4 centimeter will drop for everyone on Saturday, but Patreon supporters can already listen up through bonus episode 7 centimeter over at patreon.com slash 2000 inch. Well, it's that time again. It is time for our Patreon raffle for our Patreon family. So let's see who August raffles winners are. Come on, give us a drum roll, please, Bermuda. Congratulations to August Patreon raffle winners, Frank from the Bank Sanchez and Jeremy Samples. They each win a super cool and pretty stinking majestic art print featuring Jim Kimo West, designed and signed by the artist Dave Van Patten. If you want to get in on the September Patreon raffle, along with all the other great perks of being in our Patreon family, be sure to join us at patreon.com slash 2000 inch. Now, previous raffle winner and previous podcast guest Jason Alchill recently shared a picture over on our Facebook group, group.2000inch.com, of himself wearing his Discover Darwin raffle prize t-shirt. And it looks pretty stinking majestic, Jason. And we were also treated to some photos from Kenneth Gwynup. He's also a previous podcast guest, and he's a raffle winner. He got his buttons from bootleg buttons artist chase sherman from bootleg buttons he does a really nice job on these buttons but my favorite design had to be the button that simply said intern frank enclosed in a red circle with a red bar across it we highly recommend chase sherman and his bootleg buttons so get in touch with him if you are interested in some bootleg weird al or podcast buttons We love hearing from our listeners and other Weird Al fans, so join our Facebook community and post about Weird Al by visiting group.2000inch.com. And we also absolutely love it when we receive voicemail via our official 27-hour-a-day podcast hotline, 347 Spatula. You might even hear your message on a future episode. The 347 Spatula Hotline, the official hotline of David Ethan's 2000 Inch Weird Al podcast, is sponsored by Angel Valenzuela and David Cash, two amazing Weird Al fans and longtime podcast supporters. 
for everything about our podcast, including the incredible past episodes and guests, be sure to visit weirdalpodcast.com or 2000inch.com or both. And keep up on new episodes, podcast news, and events by following at 2000inch on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And thank you to everyone who has subscribed and left awesome reviews on Apple Podcasts, Podcast Attic, Spotify, Stitcher, and or the podcast app of your choice. Thank you once again to our guests, Mike Minnick and Adrian Vasquez. Also, thank you to UH Jeff Nucera, Jason Alchill, Kenneth Gwinnup, Allison Parsons, Neil Camera, Sisters of Sound Records, John Bermuda Schwartz, Dave Van Patten, Chase Sherman, and Terry Taylor, a.k.a. The Red Rooster. Thank you to the Grammy Award-winning Jim Kimo West for our incredible theme song. And thank you to Weird Al Yankovic, as this podcast probably would not exist without him. And a big thank you to all of you, our listeners, subscribers, Patreon supporters and sponsors, and everyone else who makes our podcast possible. Thank you for listening to Dave and Ethan's 2000-inch Weird Al podcast. And always remember to gill and chill. You know, Ethan, it is so great to finally have our good friends, Mike and Adrian, on the podcast. Yeah, I agree. You know, I was really excited when they mentioned that they were starting their own podcast called Adrian and Mike's Living in Weird Al's Fridge podcast. Yeah, me too. But, you know, it's been several months since they announced that, and I've yet to see an episode. Oh, that's strange. Now, you and I, we know how much effort goes into launching a podcast, but they announced it back on April 1st. You'd think they'd have an episode out by now. You know, maybe they just don't know how to push the play button. Ah, uh, good thought. You know, you and I, we can definitely identify with that. <laughs> That was Dave and Ethan's 2000 Inch Weird Al Podcast, episode 122 Inch. More fun than fireworks and chicken eggs. Listen, before the next concert, instead of going to a restaurant, we just eat the food album beforehand.